Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I haven't been thinking about this principle, so it's humbling to be invited to talk in, in such conference. I would like to um, talk about an old conjecture in foliation theory and, and a point of view of Thurston that I found very interesting. Um, uh, as you might know, um, Thurston proved um, a couple of surprising edge principle theorems in foliation theory. And, um, and other people try to uh, find their own proofs because uh, these methods are not um, <coughs> communicated perhaps the community. And, and the one that I would like to talk about is also unique in a sense that um, it doesn't follow the philosophy of edge principle. Eva here under this morning uh, had a slide saying the philosophy of edge principle is like you have some geometric object that you would like to study. Uh, and then you relax some conditions, you get formal space and uh, that translates the geometry question to algebraic topology question. And because algebraic topology is deemed to be easier, that's a progress. But Thurston did the other way around in one of his theorems. So he was interested in some topological space and he used geometry to uh, study the homotopy type of that space. So this is, <clears throat> uh, this I hope you uh, find interesting. So I just, Start right away with this uh, interesting object. Oh, oh. oh you, and you said everything is a principle, so that's. that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the key object um, uh, in my talk is called half linear space. So one can, one can define it in, in algebraic topology in, in the following way. So there is a groupoid um, um, called gamma and R whose objects are just points in Rn. And morphisms between two points is given by C are uh, germs of these morphisms. Sending X to Y. Okay, and then um, when you have a groupoid, you can associate classifying space to it. And understanding the homotopy type of this. Uh, is quite a mystery. Um, in many degrees, the homotopy groups uh, seem to have a real vector space structure. So this is this is the main space that uh, people wanted to study. <clears throat> so the question is, what are homotopy groups? Uh, are? And this space is. Uh, is significant in, in foliation theory for, for the following reason. So there is this theorem that, uh, that can be uh, attributed to Kromov, uh, Phillips, and Hafniger. It says that if you have a manifold X, maybe par compact open manifold, say so of dimension N, then the um, say the set of um, plane field say co-dimension Q uh, <clears throat> integral plane field on X. up to homotopy is in bijection with lifting. Um, so if you have a co-dimension Q integral plane field, you can split the tangent bundle uh, into sum of two uh, uh, 
uh, vector bundle. So you <laughs> splitting of a tangent bundle to the classifying space of BGLQ across BGLN minus Q. And then <clears throat> over this space lives B gamma Q across BGLN minus Q. <clears throat> the space of lists of this tangent of the splitting of the tangent bundle, again, up to homotopy, <clears throat> is in bijection with this uh, geometric data, if X is open. Here is it by concordance, not by homotopy? Oh, here, here is a point. So if it's open, oh, it's integrable homotopy. So the contribution of Thurston, um, as Yasha mentioned, if, so if X is even closed and compact, the same theorem holds if Q is bigger than one, if you change homotopy to concordance. Um, and if, you, if Q is one, uh, if the Euler characteristic is zero. So that, that was some other surprising <coughs> uh, statement that holds if you, if you change the notion of homotopy to concordance. So the reason that we care about the homotopy type of this space is has this significance. <coughs> and <coughs> so there is a, there is a map from B gamma Q to uh, the classifying space BGLQ, <coughs> uh, sometimes you know by nu. This uh, roughly uh, means the um, the normal bundle of the foliation of co-dimension Q, and the um, homotopy fiber of this is uh, denoted by B gamma Q bar, and the main conjecture in homotopy theory of foliations uh, that goes back to Hafniger himself <clears throat> is this space is 2Q connected. And, and you can see that, for example, if Q is um, roughly half of the dimension of the manifold or bigger, then just by obstruction theory, um, you, can, you can lift the splitting of a tangent bundle that would say that any plane field whose dimension is roughly the half of a dimension or lower can be uh, changed up to homotopy to give you an integrable one. <clears throat> okay, so this is the main, uh, I guess, open problem in homotopy theory of foliations. I have one question. Just uh, so that's um, a topological group, will it? Yes. We take the classifying space of that thing. Okay. Yes, that's right. Okay, so now um, let's change this statement to uh, uh, a bundle theory. So this is called Mather Thurston. So suppose that uh, maybe M is compact and smooth manifold. And consider, say, um, <clears throat> foliated M bundles or flat M bundles. I the fiber is, uh, is diffeomorphic to M and you have a flat structure, meaning you have a foliation that is transverse to fibers say over X, now to isomorphism. You can forget the flat structure and just consider M bundles over X and up to isomorphism. Then this, these moduli theoretic uh, problems, they, they have classifying spaces, in fact. And um, this is classified by the following object. So the classifying space of diffeomorphism group of M with discrete topology and delta means uh, equipped with discrete topology, this is discrete. And, and this is classified by E diff of M with its usual, say, C infinity topology, if I'm considering smooth case. And there is a map, this forgetful uh, functor um, 
is also given by a map between these two, which is induced by just identity group homomorphism between the group with discrete topology uh, to, um, to the same group with its infinity topology. And <clears throat> we call this map theta. And, and Thurston realized uh, an interesting fact about the homotopy fiber of this map. So <clears throat> let me call the uh, homotopy fiber of this map B diff bar. And this also classifies some geometric object. This is uh, flat trivial M bundles. OK, so I'm going to give this object another name and, uh, and go back and forth. I'm going to call this uh, the functor foliated M. And um, if I consider compactly supported diffeomorphisms, I denote this by compactly supported and so on. And the theorem of Thurston is This object satisfies uh, what is now called C principle. So this, this functor of uh, foliations compactly supported M satisfies C principle. I'm going to say what I mean by C principle instead of H principle. <coughs> so Say it here. So suppose that um, you have you have a what was the subscript C for compactly supported. But I thought M was compact. Oh, in that if if M is not compact, you can uh, yes. Let me put. And C, C is not equal to C. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's compact. Yeah, so by, so one can one can give um, a following definition of the C principle. Of course, these things are very uh, um, when you say H principle, you mean something um, vague. Um, but here is what I uh, mean by C principle. Suppose that uh, F is is a functor, say from um, manifolds of dimension n. <clears throat> You say n with boundary here. Category of n-dimensional manifolds say with boundary and the opposite category two spaces, um, logical spaces. And and this is this is the functor that assigns to every manifold the geometric object that you would like to study. And suppose that we have another uh, functor, and I'm going to call it f little f. Uh, to say that this is the formal part. And, and you have a natural transformation between these two functors. <clears throat> uh, say f of m to um, formal part. And we say that this natural transformation, say iota, <coughs> if if this induces homology isomorphism, um, <clears throat> um, we say F satisfies C principle. If the formal part can be studied via algebraic topology and and one way to phrase this in abstract terms is to say that this functor uh, is linear uh, in a sense of embedding calculus. And that would mean that um, we can. By homology isomorphism, you take Z coefficients or you could also take twisted coefficients. Um, <clears throat> you could take any local coefficient that comes from the formal part. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Linear functor. And 
And by this, um, for this talk, I mean that, for example, um, the formal uh, part of M is homotopy equivalent to the section space of the following bundle. So you have a manifold M, you have the frame bundle of M, and you twist it with the value of this at Rn. So over uh, GLN. So um, <clears throat> when I say linear, I basically mean uh, that we have this description for, for the formal part. And because this is a section space, we can use algebraic topology to study it. And for our example, the, uh, the foliation part, the, the formal foliation, uh, the value on Rn is, is this space P gamma n bar. And, and the theorem of Thurston, if you, um, if you phrase it like this, it says that B diff bar is homology isomorphic to, uh, to the section space, even the from us. Yes. So I just wanted to get clarify uh, full F and F formal. It, it maybe starting with why you call the sections uh, untrivialized flat, flat bundles. Sorry, um, flat connections on trivialized bundles full. Um, the I'm, I just abbreviated foliated M bundles by full. Oh, oh, trivial. Yes, trivial foliated. Trivialized. Yes. And then what's F? F is just the inclusion of manifolds into spaces. This is just some, this is a general discussion when I say a functor F um, satisfies C principle. So if you have, oh, if you have F and some formal version uh, for the specific question that you're studying and a linear transformation between them, I say that it satisfies C principle if it's homology isomorphism and if this functor is linear. That's what I mean that the, somehow the right-hand side is, is amenable to do uh, algebraic topology. So, um, what linear and what? Yes, I didn't say what linear uh, means in, in, in the sense of embedding calculus, but I um, said that if it's linear, then it's homotopy equivalent to the section space like this. Okay, <clears throat> so C stands for homology. C stands for cobordism. <laughs> yes. The frame of the being that H. Okay. So now one can translate um, Hafniger's conjecture into. Um, a question of uh, n bundles the following way. So one can say that the uh, conjecture of half figure can be translated into saying that uh, if you consider this map, the IOTA map, this map induces. homology isomorphism, then the degree of homology is less than the dimension of the map, less than or equal to. So a geometric way to think about this in, in, a, in a C principle way, I guess, is, um, is if you have, say, some base, um, say this is X, and you have some bundle over X, let's say E0, uh, with a with fiber M, then, then you would like to find a cobordism um, and, and a bundle over it, again, M bundle, such that, <coughs> such that on this side, which I'm going to X prime, you have bundle E1, again with fiber M, such that this bundle is flat. Okay, this is. So you would like to cobord your bundle to something that maybe has more complicated fundamental group so that the bundle becomes flat. And this says that half conjecture says that this is possible if the dimension of the base 
is less than or equal to the dimension of the fiber. Wait, so this conjecture is weaker than the old conjecture? It's implied by that, that one. It's equivalent. It's equivalent? Yes. I see. But is that is that obvious? Because you went from yeah, so this is using uh, this is using Thurston's theorem for B D floor. Uh, if if this is two Q connected, then the space of sections would be Q connected. That means that the homology of the fiber vanishes of the deeper Q. Um, so then this becomes homology isomorphism up to that dimension. Okay, so. And is it known at all, like in some lower range, or is it just open? Uh, very good. Gonna I'm going to say <laughs> now. Great. One can actually also formulate this in the identity component. That's going to be uh, um, easier for my discussion. This is uh, this means identity component. That's equivalent, but that's going to be easier for what I'm going to say later. So one remark is. <laughs> Well, Thurston uh, showed that for H1 is isomorphism. You have H1 iso, and then H2 is uh, surjection. <coughs> and so, <coughs> one surprising result of Thurston. Uh, was that for homeo you get always homology isomorphism? So if you if you allow C zero uh, for the bundles, this is always uh, uh, homology isomorphism, no matter what the degree is. And uh, this is also Thurston. And for C1, Suboy proved the same version. So by, by Suboy. Uh, but this is true for any regularity. Uh, any regularity, not the dimension n plus one. So uh, except one regularity. You always have H1 isomorphism. On H2, you have surjection, but we don't know even injectivity on H2. Okay. So one, one theorem. Sorry, so for C1, the whole the whole conjecture is known? Yes. It's always, again, similar to homeo, you always have homology isomorphism. So but, but more than the conjecture, right? It's more than the conjecture. Yes, it's true in all degrees. Uh, that means that you have, if you have a C one M bundle, you can always, no matter what the dimension of the base is, you can always cobord it to a flat one. Okay, so one theorem is if if the dimension of the manifold is not one mod four. <coughs> Then one have um, then the map from E diff identity components is free to be diff um, induces rejection. H three would trash the coefficient. So any any three cycle. Uh, any rational th three cycle here is represented by um, M bundle over three manifold. And this says that if, uh, if the dimension of the fiber is not one mod four, you can always cohort it to, to a flat one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's one uh, statement. I would like to... <laughs> Um, say um, a little bit more about the homeo case because I'm assuming that it's going to be related to uh, Mike's talk. Um, <laughs> any questions so far? Okay. Um, so 
remark. So consider the homeo case, and uh, even even when M is just a circle, um, uh, it says something interesting. So consider B homeo. So say that theorem to the theorem. Yes. That's your theorem. Yes. So B B homeo discrete of S one to B homeo. Uh, is homology isomorphism by Thurston. So that means that if you have a circle bundle over some manifold, you can convert it to uh, a bundle that comes from the representation of pi one. <clears throat> but this is this is known uh, as a homotopy type. This is CP infinity. Um, so basically, everything is classified by the Euler class. So the bundle is is classified by the Euler class. And then there is a Miller Wood inequality. Um, <clears throat> saying that saying that if you have a flat circle bundle, say over a surface, then then the Euler class of the bundle cannot be uh, large. It's going to be bounded, so that uh, can be translated into the Euler class. If you integrate Euler class over the surface um, as a form, um, it's going to be less than or equal to uh, the Euler characteristic of the base. <clears throat> so basically, if you <clears throat> if you have a surface with some um, circle bundle over this, whose Euler class evaluated on the base is large, it has no flat structure. But then <clears throat> Thurston says that somehow up to bordism, you can enlarge the uh, genus so that it becomes flat. Okay. And and Mike Friedman has, has a point of view of combining Thurston's theorem with the Miller Wood inequality that uh, I'm guessing that he's going to talk about. But inspired by this combination of Miller Wood and Thurston, uh, we recently uh, investigated the bounded version of, of Thurston's theorem. <coughs> and <coughs> And you see this Miller Wood inequality says that the Euler class is bounded, meaning that it's in the bounded cohomology of homeo of S1. And in fact, it's a theorem of um, Matsumoto Marisa that this bounded, the second bounded cohomology of homeo is generated by, by the Euler class. So this is isomorphic to R. <clears throat> so the only thing that, that can be seen uh, is the Euler class uh, in the bounded cohomology. We, <laughs> we recently proved the, the following statement. Uh, so theorem joint with Nicolas Mono um, <clears throat> says that if M is a circle or closed two disc or just a real line, then, um, then the bounded homology of the homeo, uh, let me say the bounded homology of homeo, um, of M is isomorphic to homology of B homeo coefficients. <clears throat> so it, it's isomorphism in all degrees for these manifolds. <clears throat> I should say as a remark that uh, 
it's known that the bounded cohomology version for, for the Thurston's theorem does not hold for surfaces of genus bigger than uh, for bigger than zero. So, <coughs> so for uh, for um, sigma G where G positive, uh, the same statement doesn't hold. Uh, does not hold. This is actually uh, uh, a recent interesting result of uh, Bowden, uh, Hensel, and, and Webb. Okay. So one thing that I would like to add. The two spheres still open. The two spheres still open, yes. One thing that I would like to emphasize here is um, these C principle type statements or a homology isomorphism type statement. But even if you just think about H1, H1 is uh, the group divided by its commutator. So for example, saying that for homeo of R, um, so the statement is a bounded homology of homeo of R, Um, is zero. The reduced bound homology is zero. So this says that, for example, if star is one, this is bounded perfect, meaning that everything is um, product of commutators, but a fixed number. And here, um, if you if you want to uh, think about it a little, uh, this is uh, this is related to the main point that I would like to uh, make in this talk is that when you think about homeomorphism or diffeomorphism of manifolds, um, <clears throat> if the manifold is compact or you think about compactly supported, usually the question is easier to answer uh, compared to open manifolds. This is, <clears throat> um, this is a little bit different to other edge principle type theorems that the open case is supposed to be easier. So for example, the fact that this is perfect is for, for real line, it's not too hard, but perfectness of this is harder than the compactly supported version. So I'm going to make this point that perfectness of a uh, homeo identity component of M uh, when M is open is, is much harder. Even without any boundaries. Even? Even without any boundaries. Even without any boundaries, yes. Much harder than a closed case. What is the tilde over H mean? Uh, reduced, uh, i.e. Uh, when star is bigger than zero. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so let me um, uh, try to explain this point in uh, um, in in Pearson's point of view. So going back to uh, Matthew Pearson theory. Um, so I said that you have this um, functor of trivial foliated M bundles, say compactly supported ones, and you have them map to the formal part. And Thurston, so the surprising thing that happened historically um, is, is that Thurston proved that this is homology isomorphism. Thurston. And this is homology isomorphism without knowing the open case. Uh, 
without knowing that the foliation of uh, the fall of Rn to the formal fall of Rn is homology isomorphism. So he didn't know this local version, but he proved the compactly supported version. And this local version was later proved, maybe a year or two later, by Graham Siegel. And somehow that resulted in, I guess, uh, forgetting the original method of Thurston. So this was proved by Siegel. Uh, later. I would like to tell you a little bit about um, how uh, one could prove um, such statement without knowing the local version. Okay, <laughs> but a little bit of um, remarks. Excuse me, yes. when you say local version, it means without compact support. Without compact support, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Speaking of flat bundles, uh, including at its unity, it's not horizontal. Right. Yes. So somehow, geometrically, uh, I'm going to say something vague, but hopefully helpful. Uh, so if you think about this, uh, this is uh, this is suppose that the fiber is Rn, and then you have some foliation. But on this side, on the formal side, you can you can have leaves that go off to infinity, and and nonetheless, Thurston, not Thurston, Siegel says that these two are homology isomorphs. <clears throat> okay, so. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't understand. Why can't the leaves go to infinity on the on four? Because this is um, this is B diff bar of R M, and this means that um, the the leaves are diffeomorphic to the base, and the holonomy lives in D of R M. So that means that you you should have holonomy at every time. <clears throat> um, but here you don't have this condition. Okay, so remark. Um, I should say that this has been studied in, in some other cases. So MacDuff, um, for example, proved that uh, the, the volume preserving case, the full Rn, uh, so vol, I should say vol, the volume preserving case to the formal part. Is homology isomorphism if n is bigger than two. Uh, so n equals two cases is still open. Um, All right, um, so I'm going to say um, something that um, um, uh, that I'm not going to give all the conditions, but one can make Thurston's method abstract and prove a more general theorem um, that if you have um, if you have two functors, say f. And and the formal part, say from uh, manifolds boundary to spaces, <laughs> if the following conditions hold, and 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 you have a map between um, you have a natural transformation from S to uh, to the formal part, and <clears throat> And um, and you have the following conditions, so satisfying. First of all, if 
the formal space of Rn is n, n minus one connected. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so F should satisfy some properties. I'm not gonna list all of them, but the most important one. So F has to be good for the lack of the better word, I guess. Uh, F is a good functor. And this means a uh, few things, but the most important ones are uh, the following two. One is if you have two open sets, one inside the other, say U inside V, <clears throat> I'm assuming that when I say these things, I also have the compactly supported versions. And then I can, if you, if you consider the value of uh, F, the compactly supported version on U, this maps into the compactly supported version of, of V, and this has to be homology isomorphism. It's so basically saying that if you have a small disk sitting in a bigger disk, um, in the inclusion you get uh, on the value of the functor, the compactly supported version has to be homology isomorphism. And <clears throat> Um, uh, and what else? Oh, and <clears throat> the value of this functor on, so if you have disk, the rel half of the boundary, this is my notation, so rel half of the boundary, this is <clears throat> um, acyclic. If these two conditions hold, we uh, we say that F is good, and and also F has fragmentation. That I'm going to define. Then um, on the compact manifolds, you have uh, you have homology isomorphisms. And for compact from FM to formal M uh, is a homology iso. Okay, I have to tell you what fragmentation means, but, uh, <clears throat> but I just wanted to mention that one can. Uh, one can use Thurston's method in more abstract terms to um, to think about C principal theorems without having a local version. <laughs> okay, so what do I mean by fragmentation? <clears throat> fragmentation is, uh, I think, I'm not sure, but it's. I'm guessing that this is very much inspired by uh, the fragmentation of uh, homeomorphisms and diffeomorphisms. So here is a property that, so I'm gonna say as a remark, suppose that you have a uh, diffeomorphism, doesn't matter in which your regularity, that is isotopic to um, identity and say M is compact here also. I'm going to emphasize that this is compactly supported. <clears throat> then um, suppose that you also cover M with some open sets. So uh, open cover. And Thurston observes that um, you can Thurston, again, observe that you can write F as a composition of diffeomorphisms um, such that the 
a port of fi is inside ui. Is that isotopic to identity? Yes, isotopic to identity. It's isotopic to identity. You can you can fragment it so that you can write it as a uh, composition of things that are supported in UI. So this is this is not so hard to see, but it's a it's a key for the definition that he later used for uh, fragmenting foliations and um, and the section space ports. Um, so let me say. Uh, Fragmentation of, of space of sections. So re remember, this is so space of sections um, is is the right hand side part. I'm going to say what it means for fragmenting the right hand side part, and then it's going to be uh similar for, for the other part um so uh, in general terms if you have a bundle over a manifold m say with fiber f um so this is n dimensional and suppose that you have a riemannian metric on it so yeah. And fix some epsilon, positive epsilon, uh, less than injectivity radius. Um, okay. <clears throat> the goal is to uh, try to understand the um, um, homology of uh, space of sections of that bundle, and um, if you if you fix a section, then you can define um, a support for each section, and in that way you can make sense of compactly supported sections. So, if if I fix some section, say the S zero is a section. Then I can define uh, support of another section S to be, um, you know, those points in M such that the value at X is different from the value of the base section. Okay. <clears throat> yes. And and then the goal is to um, study say compactly supported sections of this bundle. I'm going to say sections of pi. <clears throat> so uh, understand the homology of this. OK. <clears throat> so if you would like to understand the homology, um, a, a good way to do uh, is to have a filtration on, on space and understand the filtration quotients. And then if you have filtration and understand filtration quotients, you, you have a spectral sequence so that you can understand the homology. So you would like to filter this space. And the way that you can filter this space, or the way that Thurston filtered it, is, is as follows. So for this fixed epsilon, <coughs> consider the, uh, the what I'm going to call epsilon supported sections. And this is uh, those sections, those compactly supported sections, such that the support of S can be covered by union of balls, say I from one to N of um, balls of radius Ri over point around a point Xi. <clears throat> So this is radius center, such that 
ri less than two to the minus n epsilon of all i. Okay. <clears throat> there is a reason for choosing this number um, that I can uh, explain a little uh, maybe at the end. And or one way to think about this is you see if you if you cover the supportive section uh, a section by union of balls that the radius decreases in terms of number like this somehow the volume of the support is going to be less than epsilon. So in particular, um, you have this subspace of sections where epsilon supported. I'm going to call it. inside compactly supported sections. And the advantage of epsilon supported section um, compared to compactly supported is that this is filtered. You can just filter it by the number of balls. Okay. <clears throat> so we can filter and then try to see if you can understand the filtration quotients and, and run spectral sequence. And the theorem of Thurston is this is weak equivalence if the homotopy groups of F is fiber, uh, F is highly connected. Okay. So if the fiber is highly connected, you can, you can only consider epsilon supported section. <clears throat> In fact, Thurston did it for less than or equal to but one can see that uh, less than n is enough. And I observed that this, uh, this also implies, this is very similar to the statement of non-abelian Poincaré duality, uh, but I realized that it's not re relevant for, for the theme of the talk, uh, although it was in the title, so. Um, <clears throat> but this implies what is known as non-abelian Poincaré duality theorem. So it was known to Thurston, I would say. N is the dimension of M? N is a dimension of M, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> Sorry, let me see with the capital N. You're doing like the union over all possible capital Ns here? Yes. So is it obvious why this is contained in compactly supported section? Uh, so each one is, um, as I said, the. the um, so the volume of this is going to be less than epsilon. And it's going to be covered in some open set um, whose, whose volume is less than epsilon. Does yeah. that make it compact? If you, if you take um, um, the closure of this, um, it's going to be compact soft set, I think, as n increases also. And for fixed n, it's going to be compact. For fixed then I see. Yes. So, so yeah, I guess is is this set like you take the union over all n or? Yeah. So maybe I should say a better way or, to say or this. Are we fixing a specific n? Um, to emphasize the uh, filtration, you could say I'm gonna I'm gonna say six ten epsilon supported with uh, k <coughs> if. I can cover the supports by union of n balls for n less than or equal to k. Okay. okay. So for fixed k, I define it like this, and this is the union of this over OK. Okay. So I, I, I see. Yeah. Great. So now you have filtration, and every element of this is compactly supported. Sure. 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 Yeah. Great. Yes. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I have <laughs> five minutes. Uh, let me end with um, saying the strategy uh, when you have filtration. So you have two functors. So one is maybe full on uh, of M, say compactly supported, and you have formal compactly supported M. 
<clears throat> and then for some fixed epsilon, you realize that um, there is a subspace in both of these that I'm going to call full infinity of them. That means that in the filtration, uh, the infinity level. That is uh, equivalent. And then you know that these things are filtered. Um, so there is a filtration full one of them and full F one of them. And you have corresponding maps that, that is filtration preserving. And then the idea um, <clears throat> is you can understand filtration quotients and the filtration quotients, and then the, you get a spectral sequences. Um, so I'm just gonna summarize um, that there are, uh, uh, there are maps between filtration quotients. So this part is, is abstract algebraic topology that you can run. So I'm not gonna dwell on it too much. So, so the homology of say, FLI over one to homology this converges to homology of uh, uh, the upper one and So then if you can compare the homology of the filtration quotients, you get in the limit homology isomorphism. So that's um, how the argument goes. You need to understand the filtration quotient. But the interesting thing is, is, um, <clears throat> is filtration quotient is also uh, described in abstract terms. This is, this is now very well understood in, in embedding calculus. Um, although the the filtration on, say, the section space part is different from the filtration you get in embedding calculus, but the filtration quotients are the same. And, and we can understand and, and run such argument. And this gives a new Matheson's theorem uh, for, for cases that um, where asked by people. So for example, theorem I'm going to end with. So again, the compactly supported part of foliations of uh, say contact in the transverse direction can compactly support it. This and, and the keel version also compactly supported that they satisfy C principle. Again, in the contact case and in the PO case, we don't know the local version. But running Thurston's ideas, uh, one can prove the compact and supported version without knowing the local version. So I, <clears throat> I think that's, uh, that's an interesting outcome of, of the original Thurston's method. And maybe one can uh, but I advertise somehow thinking geometrically about the local version. Okay, thank you. Questions? You say con contact is some kind of like also symplectic or even just contact? Just contact. So what, what is special? What is special about contact? Oh, uh, one thing is this. So <clears throat> this is like uh, uh, is is hard to do in symplectic case because of non-squeezing theorem. Um, when you have smaller thing embedded in a bigger thing, and you want to prove that this embedding is homology isomorphism, it's not it's not known that it's not true. It's not known that it's true in symplectic case. That's why 
MacDuff couldn't prove it for n equals two, the, the local version that I erased. So for n, n equals two, the volume preserving is this symplectic case also. But for contact, this, this is not hard. Somehow for contact amorphism, you have dilation and, and contraction and so on. So we can prove this, but not for symplectic. But, but C principle is known in the volume preserving case for the dimension greater than two? Yes, that's, that's also uh, uh, feels surprising for this statement. Yes. And this is a separate paper of Mac. So MacDuff has three papers and just one of them is proving this for volume preserving case. Yes. Conformal syntactic. Conformal syntactic? I <laughs> maybe. Yeah, certainly you could do conformal symplectic as soon as you have contraction. So so maybe I'll ask what is the original motivation for the conjecture on the connectivity of E gamma? Why did he conjecture yeah. um, I, I just guess. Um, one thing is that it's known that it's not 2q plus 1 connected. That's known. There are non trivial elements there. But that's not a good reason. Uh, it's non trivial element because of some kind of Gilfan Fuchs cohomology. Some Gilfan Fuchs cohomology, yes. Um, and, and, but uh, half figure had. More reason to do this. Uh, <clears throat> there is a version of continuous cohomology for groupoids, and and Hafiger could show that uh, somehow the continuous cohomology of uh, B gamma and R is zero when star is less than. So it could show that for the continuous cohomology and said, okay, maybe for the cohomology is also. He did it with dot. It, was, uh, it did it with, oh, bot also has, uh, has done something, but this is the differentiable cohomology paper. He wrote it by himself. So that's why I said, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we have to get bots. Everything happened here just 50 years ago. <laughs> oh, wait, now you get? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, I yes, dear. Okay, so there are no more questions. Thanks.